uh, finding that momentum, wanting to continue that through and find themselves in a nice positive four and three. Derpy, taking up that tank roll here for a little while now since Louis has graduated. Kashir and Petal, both in their junior year, kind of been the, the star DPS line for this squad for about a, a year, year and a half or so. And that's really where my eyes are going to be. I think it's, it's that oh, DPS line from UTD that will drive this home for them. Couldn't agree with you more as we'll go ahead and pull up the other squad, the Vikings, and what they have to offer in this series. As uh, I'm, I'm very curious to see Bread going up against Derpy on this tank line. As you mentioned, Derpy taking over uh, tank duties as the previous tank graduated. So uh, how will Bread be able to match up against Derpy is what I'm looking forward to in this series. Yeah, and the Vikings, again, are kind of a squad that seemed perpetually slept on, and every time you sleep on them, they come and surprise you. Um, it's just kind of, that's that's what I get from the squad. They, I mean, they, they three old records to start off their season, but have kind of dipped since. Dropped one, uh, dropped a map five to ASU. Uh, no shame in that one. ASU has been a, a big upstart here in the fall of 23. Yeah. Uh, but just Gravery of... It's, it's gotten worse and worse as the season's gone on. 1 3 0, then went to a 2 3, then lost in a 1 3, then lost in an 0 3. So I can't help but feel that Grandview may have slid down a slippery slope. Let's see if they can pick themselves up by their bootstraps here against the comments. Yeah, that's going to be huge for this team is being able to gain some confidence and turn their season around. And this series has to start off somewhere. And for this one, is having this hole in the middle of the point reminds me of a refinery in New Junk City. Uh, even though there's a jump pad down there, I've seen time and time again, if you can disrupt the team even a little bit, get someone down there where they're not expecting it, it opens up the opportunity uh, to throw teams off their plan. And another call back here to university as well. Where like, even if you don't take them, you don't send them back to spawn, you take them out of the fight long enough to where it can certainly be impactful. Couldn't agree with you more as we take a look at the compositions for these teams. UTD is going to roll out on a full out brawl composition. Yes. Sim May is in play. So they're going to look to get to that point and really bunker down, set up those Symmetra teleporters for us. Uh, turrets, as I would say, uh, for the Vikings. They're going to take a little bit of a different approach. Still a brawl, but they're going to go with the Sigma. Uh, so hopefully these accretion rocks can try and stop Derpy from being super aggressive on this Reinhardt. I think Zoe is going to give a moment to pause once we realize that they're going up against a May Symmetra. Yeah. A Reinhardt Ice Queen comp. Full effect. And a slow approach. I like how UTD are taking it patient. They're looking for the right opportunity to teleport in and not just bull rushing in full heartedly. Uh, as again, this Reinhardt composition just being extremely patient. Now they find the opportunity to push in. Maywall does not get what it needs to do. Yeah, Petal's just a touch late on it. Brett's able to make that read, but unfortunately for Grandview, Zoe does get caught out. So early cap going over to UTD here as they try to pursue this 5v4, but doesn't look like they're going to overextend measured approach, measured aggression thus far out of the comments. Yeah, as the, as the Vikings are looking to push back in as a disruptor field is trying to split up the team of UTD, but they are not falling for it. Man, Vikings are, are playing this fairly well. They're keeping their distance. Look at Derby's ult charge compared to Bread. Derby hasn't been able to close the gap enough to get any meaningful swings in on the team. Still, it's been enough to keep Graven to evade, but eventually they're going to get tired of waiting around, move on to the point. Zoe dashes through, takes Kashir down in a flash. Derby now trying to swing down Bread. The Kinetic Grass can't stop that giant rocket hammer. And Zoe's able to pick up another one, but an up close pin will take Bread down. They got a 2v2 on this point. It's two DPS versus Derpy. Hey, well, it was Doyi, but Doyi falls, and now Derpy just hold on for as long as they can. All things considered, it's a great amount of percentage you're able to get for UTD, considering the fact that Vikings were continuously able to keep their distance and build up to these ultimates. I'd say the one good thing about the Vikings were you able to push in, and it didn't cost you a single ultimate, and you pulled out that Ant Matrix from uh, from Doyi. So you are in a great position. You can get aggressive, and now you're able to hold these angles and wait for UTD to come in. How did the comments want to make their approach? 
Looks like going around the left side. Haven't really seen him teleport on top of anybody just yet. It's just using speed. And kind of corralling Grandview back onto the objective. Ideally to try to throw a blister down, but they're going to have to do it. Sinian's tank, if at all. What from the outside? Fights three with the overclock. Say what as the overclock comes through Damn. in a big way for these Vikings and just being able to win these fights judiciously is going to afford them this ability to match the percentage with little ult commitment. Grand, the Vikings could not ask for more, Jeff. It'll tie up the percentage as well. Yeah, I mean, Sojourn opens up the fight with a 3k overclock. Uh, you certainly cannot ask for much more. And the Vikings are right back, in fact, in control and in the lead here on our opening sub map. Shatter on the outside here for Darpy. Wall up. Bread gets out of there with a Gravetic Flux. Decides to fly up. Bust him down while you're ready. Nice shot. Catches Canary. Oh, my goodness. Eliminating the sound barrier from this fight. Zoe over the top of the blade. And what? It continues to wreak havoc on the Sojourn. It's the DPS duo of Grandview who have the more lethality right now. Yeah, that was very well played by the Vikings. Being able to use that flux to force out the sound barrier from uh, Malarad. Then you're able for Zoe. Even though you didn't get a lot of kills with the blade, you did enough damage for your team to finish off the job. And now you have the sound barrier to sustain through some of these incoming ultimates that the comments come back with. Sound barrier will save bread through the earth shatter, Derpy. Derpy very low, but has to touch toes on that point to keep hopes alive. A little trade out with Malarad as they move on. Ant Matrix out of the back. Still, UTD cannot find any final blows on the back of this. Right in the corner. Sub 100 health. Does get mowed down. Hammered down, should I say. Kashir will manage to find one. Still have a couple of DPS here lingering about. But looks like UTD are cleaning up pedal specifically. Yeah, and being able to get that isolation on to Bread and get the kill is going to be the name of the game for the Comets to try and flip this point on its head. Both teams not coming out with a lot of ultimates coming in this next fight, so it's going to be about how you take these angles for the Vikings and try and find these kills swiftly and quickly. Always poke. Forces the entirety of UTD to rotate around right into Bread, who had moved from that left-hand side. But Bread got collapsed on, found themselves overwhelmed on the high ground. UTD free to spread out and claim a lot more point presence after that initial kill onto the Sigma. And this is, might just do it. With time dwindling down, Grandview are not going to get a complete fight, if one at all, here in the final seconds. It's a dash to the outside for Zoe. We'll initiate the overtime. Give some hope. What will fall? As Pedal has had enough of their nonsense. Puts one right into the dome. Zoe on the outside. Almost got pushed into the water, but UTD, or I say water, lava, lava. rather. <laughs> uh. That's the DPS from UTD, who will eventually clean up. Get it done. First round going their way. Yeah, with the composition that the comp playing with, with that Symmetra, I mean, you talked about it in the opening of this map. It was going to make Zoe's job that much harder on the Genji going into, at first it may Sim, but just going into Sim in general. We saw them touch that point at the end and was forced out immediately because of those turrets. And trying to re-engage with these Sigma compositions are really hard because then you see these hold close and look to speed on Red, and we just saw that as they tried to re-engage. They just got on top of Bread, and there was nothing they could do as we take a look at some of these replays. But very impressive coming out from both teams. I think uh, both teams have a lot to be proud about in that as the Vikings. They are looking to change nothing. They are going to continue to play what worked for them. <laughs> They're looking to taunt us all with a potentially crazy outlandish pick. But no, no, no. <laughs> the Vikings. What? Ooh, took an early. Was it rail shot? A right click? I think I'm not sure, but that was a lot of damage onto what as they made the approach. But still, Vikings managed to make it onto this objective with everybody alive. A little bit of high ground control on the far side. UTD, slowly but surely, mission way over. Using a teleport to get out of that high ground. Didn't see a lot of that in the first round. Looked like they were saving some strats here for round two. As Hog Runestone is already out of this fight. Very vulnerable backline. Zoe gets melted by the Photon Beam. Yeah, I think with coming into this map on downtown with a lot of high ground possibilities we saw, that's where you start to get more value out of the teleporter. There's not as 
as many places on Volcano to really take advantage of that. But now we see that coming through for the Comets. I mean, if you're the Vikings, you just got to be happy you got that 14 percentage. You have to go back to the spawn room. And as we talked about, they thrive on this space and they just couldn't find picks early enough in that fight when UTD was still trying to make their engage with that teleporter. Hey, I mean, Vikings got 14% on a losing fight and denied that 14% to UTD. It'd be 34-0 right now. Uh, on a fight that the Vikings lost, so not all bad. From the outside, nice leap over the wall just to provide some assistance there to Brett, who is in the thick of it against a May Reinhardt. <laughs> Trying to back up out of their pedal has... The Blizzard... Oh, I had an internet hiccup there. Sorry, friends. But we're right back into the thick of this thing, and it looks like Brett is overwhelmed with ice and hammers. Yeah, it, it is tough sledding. I mean, when Bread is tr when you get in the face with a Reinhardt and a May, there is absolutely nothing Bread could do. Even if you use your kinetic grasp, that primary fire just eats through it and slows you down. Bread is now going over to the pick we thought they might be playing. It is the Wrecking Ball, which it, it's still going to be tough. There's not a lot of good targets to dive onto, and this May and Sim can really slow you down. It's an interesting pick for sure. Uh, might even be downright controversial uh, as Brett is just going to get demolished immediately. And you hope that's not a panic swap, right? You hope there was an actual plan, uh, it, it some forethought into how to deal with this composition. But the pedal blizzard dominates all here on the back of this fight. UTD on track to take this map away. Vikings have not found an answer for the brawl comp in here on downtown. Yeah, as, as Brett is trying to find an angle to try and get to this point and at least force the overtime, Zoe is now over on the Tracer. So you got to be careful. You're the backline of UTD, but it just feels like desperation at this point. That all is able to pick off what? Who had such a big impact on that first map with an icicle. Sal Barrier from Canary is keeping Vikings in this. Ant Matrix there as well. Durfee has to respect it. And we'll try to field use and try to keep them alive. And the rest of the Vikings are trying to converge onto the Reinhardt, but they won't die. A defensive wall from Pedal and good healing from Doi means he is fully alive and standing. Oh. Now an Ant Matrix from the ground assist in taking Zoe out of the fight. Nobody else can get back. Mines are late. The Comets can pick early on this map. This is exactly the map you would expect to see an Echo on. Also, we have seen Kashir excel with this character in the past. So, really comfortable picks coming out of UTD. They are right in their zone with this comp. As Zoe is going to go over to the Tracer on this map. So uh, the big difference is the Tracer versus the Echo and the, the supports also. So Canary on this Ana, I think they really are looking to try and open things up in this fight with a big Antony to try and capitalize with this Doomfist dive composition. Would be ideal. Whatever your Ana player dreams of. Give me a three player Bionade. Give me all the purples. Heading right to the point, Zoe just tried to bypass a couple of players, both the Brig and the Echo. Not having any of it, because sheer accurate as could be with the try shots already too falling to the Echo thus far. As it's going to be extremely difficult, it, it's all on what to try and put pressure on Kashir in the skies, and it's just really tough on Sojourn alone. As we're going to see a swap coming out from the Vikings, they're going to move over back to the Sigma composition. They're going to have Zoe go over to that Genji to try and help capitalize with those uh, with those dashes to help confirm kills uh, and match the more poke style composition. Our slower approach here from Vikings hanging around the front. Still threatening to go upstairs. Yeah, they're waiting for the amp speed. They go upstairs. You get a kill uh, in that play as well. Heads up from Zoe to recognize the vulnerability there. And now the Vikings have a big old green light to move on to this point. But Kashir still is going to have problems. I have something to say about it. Equalizes. Plus one to the Vikings. Both teams missing a Baptiste. Kashir pops the duplicate onto this point onto a soldier. That's a lot of damage still, and not enough to take Zoe out of this fight. Not even with Malarad, they're backing him up on the brig. As that was just clean and clinical coming out from the Vikings, being able to get Doi out early in that fight was absolutely critical. That was where all their main heals relied on. We're going to see a touch coming in from the Comets, though. Uh, I don't know if there's anybody close enough to follow up on that, because they're just kind of by themselves onto the point. Yeah, but I don't think Derpe was anywhere near this fight. But it ends up being a bit of a sacrifice play there from Kashir, and it may cost the Comets this corner here. 
Yeah, that's a very important corner to be able to hold defensively. You can waste a lot of time on that first corner, but because of these stragglers that they're continuing to fight, I mean, you're going to get Zoe. You might force him to back up just a little bit, but this is absolutely devastating for the comments. Is Kashir is now going to go over to the tour, which is going to be a little bit of troublesome for Zoe, who's constantly looking for these flanks. That turret can be quite annoying when you're flanking. And into a Torbjorn and a Brig as a Genji is just terrified. Veretic Flux picks up one. Immortality Field uses to try to keep Brett alive through this. A lot of heals on the back of that. And no follow-up. Well, it's not enough to finish off Brett and overcome the healing coming out of Hogrun Stone and Conjunction. also online available. Ready to go. Here to try to back up Zoe with this Dragon Blade. High ground, right for the picking, at least the Vikings hope so. What's going to drop an overclock to start things off? UTD, just back up, drop down to low ground, not giving any sight lines to what through that in the old phase. Now, uh, from the high ground, Zoe wants to use this blade, dives in behind the Ant Matrix, pulls it out, and gets through Zoe immediately. Not even the stun is enough as a meteor strike lands. A lot of ults invested, four of them as a matter of fact, from the Vikings, but it should be good enough as you will get one last attempt at this point from the comments as now derpy's gonna go over to the reinhardt feels very weird especially going up against a doofus composition who could just see see you to death as a reinhardt player yeah you gotta have the you gotta have the punching power no pun intended genuinely uh the lethality to finish off some of that disruption. Otherwise, you just run into a blender. Everybody up close and personal from UTD is incredibly fatal. And you're seeing that on full display yeah. as UTD. Oh, no, did they know? The Torb is a Torb there. There's oh. that cap. Okay. Oh. <laughs> giving them away immediately. Somehow, she almost got it in. Yeah, at first I didn't want to give that much credence. I'm like, nah, nah, they're, they're going to get caught there. That was close. As uh, now, that was a great charge coming out from Derpy to force Bread back. Uh, as UTD, as you mentioned, if you don't have that staying power to follow up on those punches when Bread goes in, as you mentioned, you're just going to be walking into a chop shop, basically. Vikings. A lot, of, a lot of bodies up on that high ground to try to drive Derpy off of it. Kashir ends up having to drop back down low as well. Vikings are going to follow using a sound barrier to chase all the way into the back of point B. Derpy is still holding the line up front at the Molten Core with Kashir just to try to send the Vikings packing. A lot of damage because of this Ant Matrix on high from Hall of Runestone, but Derpy still manages to survive through it all with a little help from your friends. Well, not forever, unfortunately, so it's up to Kashir to come hold down the line, act as the tank on this point with the little turret to help him out. The little baby is able to get one, but Kashir won't survive much longer. Brett arrives with a thunderous smash on this objective to push point B. And what will get it done? Been standing in the way of the Vikings. Pedal? Yeah, as the pedal? No way! No way! What a hold! Yeah, so that was a two-pronged hold. So, Doi throws out the Ant Matrix to be able to keep their team in that just enough and throw out enough damage to keep them alive and get a lot of targets low. And Pedal is able to come in as the second prong of the defense and finish off the kills with all those perfectly aimed rail shots that we just saw on that replay. So very impressive coming out from the comments as now we enter final fight territory. Everything relies for the Vikings on Zoe and this blade. The last fight was such a roller coaster. All right, up into the air goes Zoe. Out comes the blade, and Kashir is back in spawn immediately. Zoe now trying to chase up to the high ground, decides to turn attention onto the Ryan Hart, gets rid of the immortality field. Derpy sitting at about half health, but shots coming in from Pedal means Zoe can't follow up. What's going to pot the overclock, and this cart is pushed in. Derpy cannot stick their face out with that overclock from what? Yeah, it was not likely you were going to get that touch anyway, but that was very unfortunate. Derpy <laughs> hit the fix. <laughs> <laughs> Derpy kind Runs of up to the, the high walls. ground for the turnaround pin to pin one up against the wall. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, that was hilarious. As the Vikings able to build up some momentum, being able to get that second point is big because that's such a very big defensive point hold that the Comets were, were looking at threatening to hold, but they come in with a lot of tools in their arsenal. Oh, and there's that focusing beam that you highlighted before this map even began. It's such a danger, particularly to a Genji. 
What does respawn and arguably onto a better target? And Major to the back in lieu of not having a tank. Pedal with an overclock in the pocket if they so need it. Looks like they don't! Is that railgun lands? The overclock pop! Canary goes down! And the DPS from UTD are more than enough to hold the line. I say that. Bread's already faked up too. He's gonna throw in the Gravitic Flux as well. Are you gonna 2v5 this, Bread? What are you doing? Zoe falls and Bread is the only one left. You still have Kashir on the back end. The Canary has showed back up for Bread. Listen, Bread said, hold my mirror. I can take this fight as well. And the dupe now comes in for Kashir. Yeah, drops a shield in front of the whole team. Shatter will find Bread back behind him, but Canary somehow gets the sound barrier up through it all. Bread is still alive and standing, and now there's an Ammatrix in the back. A duplicate Gravitic Flux is going to kill the Baptiste, but unfortunately, the right heart falls again. Kashir looking to bring it back, melts through one. Now it's a turn down onto the Sigma. Super low health, but no beam available, and the Chandelier is going to get in the way. But you do have Malarad on the ground, skating around, punching Bread in the face, and stopping this cart shy. UTD managed to hold on point C. Not allowing the Vikings to cap that third point. It, it, it's just a big sticking point. Now you put yourself with a clear win condition to go up 2-0 in this series and continue this momentum you've built up over the last couple of weeks. As uh, we take a look at some of the replays from this map, I think, I mean, again, we saw Kashir making some big time plays on that Echo. We saw them go over to the Torb on the second point, and it did provide a lot of value. That turret was troublesome for a while for Zoe on that Genji, but when the rubber needed to meet the road, it was him finding picks on that Echo. So uh, I think this has just been a story of Kashir on this map specifically, uh, as th they've just been playing fantastic. I mean, both those DPS so darn good. Kashir and Pedal both. Yeah. It's really been a, a, a DPS showdown kind of between both of our squads. UTD able to put a stop, and Derpy ends up swapping to the Reinhardt there on point B. I mean, you gotta love it. Like, the one spot you would not expect to see a Ryan is point B yeah. Blizzard World defense. Derpy makes the swap and makes it work. They ate so much time off the clock there through that second objective that only required, what, two team fights to win point C? Two and a yeah. half? Th this is where I'm very curious. Uh, UTD rolling out on the Reinhardt from the get-go. I mean, if you're going to do this, I think this is how you have to do it. You have to play uh, the, the symmetric because you have to be able to use that teleporter to get up to that high ground and force the Vikings away. Uh, I don't know if they're ready for this because they could blink and you're in the face of a Reinhardt. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Uh, they got to teleport. Okay, it's the back, high ground. Ooh, immediately cut off the prime retreat spot for the Vikings. What a smart play. Again, measured aggression from UTD. They don't get overly aggressive with it. They take away your most valuable positioning. Now you've got Kashir and Petal up on a high ground. Well, uh, all they can do from there is defend. Okay, so teleport over to Griffin. Drop it down. Now, UTD, unleash the aggression. No longer measured. Just pure Blitzkrieg into the face of the Vikings where they pick up to immediately bread falling shortly thereafter. I mean, you posed this question back on Samoa if this was like the new DNA of UTD because this is not the type of composition and style you're used to seeing them play, forcing the Reinhardt like this. And it seems like it is because they are playing it beautifully as they rotate to the back high ground and then totally get them off guard and rotate to the other high ground, get on top of them and won them the fight so decisively and so quickly. It was thorough, I mean, meticulous surgical approach. Surgical strike with a giant rocket hammer. Welcome to Dallas. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, it just big things in Texas. As uh, now we're going to see the Doomfist coming out, and this is where things can get a little bit dangerous. As you mentioned, you got... Oh, wow, Derpy's down. Yeah, but immediately, immediately the danger threat has risen. Uh, it, it is code red for Derpy. Zoe on the outside. Uh, the Vikings are... Not cleaning this up super quick. Yeah, and it's already Derpy's back in the fight, and they have ultimates in the fray to throw if you're the Comets. So a little bit of a misplay there from the Vikings, not able yeah. to follow up and really punish the Comets. 
they didn't want to give up that high ground. And honestly, you can't really blame them because look how powerful this is. Darpy is trying to march out, even with an Amatrix in their back. Darpy's under a lot of pressure. The double healing was good, though. From the outside, you do have a couple of players. Vikings want to set up all around this exit. So UTD have to look at 180 degrees, if not more so, to find all the targets putting pressure down on them. So a rotation and a teleport to the high ground to try to take it away. Pedal gets caught down on the low. Has to fight against this Doomfist and does not receive the sound barrier that comes out from Malarad. Punch in, and it's all over the top. Canary finds two with the Captain's Son. Both supports, as a matter of fact. And that dupe came out to help sustain the team. Zoe duping the Baptiste, providing that extra heals for the team, which is, I think, is smart, especially in a composition like this dive where everyone's pretty low health. To provide extra sustain was a great pick. However, UTD gets to come in this next fight. And the one thing I'd be worried about is this blizzard. The one thing the Vikings have going for them is mobility to avoid the blizzard. Meteor Strike start things off from Brett. Didn't quite see where that one landed. Oh, right next to what? Just regain some position on this high ground. Well, then UTD have struggled to take away. Then we're coming to point B with five and a half minutes. Oh, Brett got it deep. Yeah, good shot from Doye. Uh, there's the biggest threat gone. Now, how do UTD want to move forward from here? Going inside the Hall of Heroes. I'm guessing to try to find some high ground. Pedal's doing a good job of covering the back, but UTD still haven't really managed to get any position away. They just managed to hide for a minute. As it does force Zoe back, getting a lot of damage onto that Echo, but Bread's already going to be back. Okay, the cart progress does force a rotation out of the Vikings, at least a slight one. Couple drop down, couple still sitting on the high ground here from the defense. And we are back into a true 5v5. Pedal is trying to bait everybody onto this objective, if I had to guess. Yeah, to try to blizzard and make at the same time. The Vikings don't bite. Canary gets felled uh, along to that rotation, but the rest of the team disappears. Picks up Malarad on the way. What's going down means it's a 4v3 favoring UTD on this point, and the Blizzard is finally unleashed onto the objective. Could be enough to close it out. GV are able to back away. A couple of surviving members on the back stairs trying to hold. A couple of icicles from Petal, though, and looks like they sent them packing. This is very broken. The Vikings don't have much room to play with anymore. As the, they can't even push into this room because of the threat of the sim turrets in there. Even if Zoe wants to get in there and dupe, it's almost impossible. A pedal finds uh, Horgenstone. I mean, I'm surprised the Vikings weren't able to force UTV back inside at all. It's going to be a teleport along with a photon barrier out from the Comet. Zoe duplicated just to try to stay alive on this point. You do still have some contests there on the back end. It's, yeah, it's the Doomfist from Bread. Very close to another Meteor Strike. is going to use it immediately as soon as that ultimate is available. Leaping down on the pedal, down to six health. What will find the final blow? Meanwhile, Derby is just running all the way back to spawn. Four minutes taken off the clock. Yeah, it's this Reinhardt composition. I mean, it was working so well, but now that they've gotten to where you could stage these dives and it's a lot closer, it's having trouble taking the space it needs. And they're able to get past here just in time, but they're just waiting for them with this overclock. And Matrix, whoo, nice double shot. Kashir falls. Sound barrier is there, but not before one is already down. Mortality field here from the Vikings just to hold the front line because they have to hold this only four meters before the cap. They cannot step off the cart. UTD still not able to find anything despite the vulnerable position the Vikings have to put themselves in. As this is all coming down to this final fight for the Comets to try and make this a 2 0. Derpy will have the shatter as Petal, who was so close to the Blizzard, is just going to look to just completely abandon it in favor of picking up this Sojourn, which I think, you know, all things considered, you're going to need that one shot ability potential to because the Blizzard's not getting much value in this against this mobile comp that the Vikings are playing. Yeah, it's just too hard to lock anybody down. And the walls or the ultimate not having the impact it needs. Shatter's going to land on it, too, in the back, including onto the Echo. You've got to get Zoe out of there on that. The immortality feel too good from Hog Runestone. Everybody back on their feet from the Vikings, and now they're throwing hands up against Darby. The Reinhardt melts. Another big right hook, and Kashir joins them in the spawn room. And the Vikings, they have taken over on Blizzard World. They will conquer this map and tie up our series. As Dallas thrust themselves upon the sword of the Rhine of the Doom. As I think if you're going to have Kashir play the Sim, you have the option uh, of that teleporter to get you 
onto the point faster and set up. The question is, can the Vikings get in there and take advantage before UTD is able to set up? Zoe back on that Gigi. We saw how troublesome it was going into the Ice Queen on Samoa. Can they come up with the goods this time on the Gigi? You're able to get close, but they don't move into the building. So Red with an opportunity here to kind of scout things out, set up on this high ground, wait for Zoe to get in position to collapse on this back line. There it is. Both of them converge at the same time. Wall cut. Except they're eventually able to get out of there, and the first attempt from the Vikings falls a bit flat. UTD lumber their way onto the objective and try to lock this down. As we saw Tank v Tank matching up on the point, is a good Maywall is going to come in to separate Bread away from the supports, but it's not enough to find the kills. Right. Not the most value you're going to either block a punch on the escape or block some heals coming in from Canary in the back line. Hogroon, so with a long distance shot, finds Pedal. What an opener here from the Kiriko of Hogroon Stone. Now Bread is in your back line to boot. Red rejoins the fight up front after taking a considerable amount of damage. It even requires the nade out of Canary to keep them alive. Good defensive teleport. And Derpy is back in safe ground as they give up this point. Give up the point, but you're able to get out alive and you're going to be able to take a very quick re-engage, especially with this ant matrix that Doyes has available for them to use. But man, time and time again, Canary keeps hitting these big anti-nades. I was wondering how oh, Hog Runestone got that initial kill. Yeah, playing on the outside flank with what? Means there's only three players on point. Brett's gonna receive a nano boost and a nade to try to keep him alive through all of this onslaught. The pin misses. Brett finds pedal on the subsequent seismic slam. Now UTD find themselves down in this fight and he's gonna try to back away. Ooh, a pin out there! <laughs> what using those legs to find safety? Oh, that, that was going to be dangerous if you allowed them to get that exiting pick. Now they get to come into this fight. Katsune Rush Blade is... Uh, Malarad is going to have to be very judicious with this sound barrier. Fox is out. Escorting the Vikings right through the doorway and... Prompting a bit of a retreat here from UTD. It's off reset if you would. Pen counter pen blade is out. Somber in response from UTD. Zoe's not able to get through much more than an immortality field. UTD move on to the point using a photon barrier to get the flip. Now have a blizzard here to help secure this next fight. The question is, can they try and clean up without needing it? But a big anti might force that blizzard out. Hey, Derpy is thinking the stars. They are no longer purple. Another good counter charge. Derpy's been so good with these to try to nullify Bread's punches. The Blizzard is out. It looks like it managed to get one there on the back end. It was hard to tell, but no kills come through either way. At least not till after it faints. Because she's able to find that one in the end. Ooh, that was a nasty deflect through double damage while Bread goes in to get a couple of licks into the back. Some real solid haymakers. Ends up with a two going down on each side. 3v3 on the point. Meanwhile, the Vikings have flipped the objective. Now the supports are going face to face, each losing. Held by Doyi. Merge with the objective. As they're going to have the shatter available to throw into this fight at any given time. As the overtime is going to hit, are, are they going to be able to find the picks with this shatter? Got bread with it. Bread was on their back, but. No, nah, the kill does not come through. What under a lot of pressure there. Can't hold that angle as Pedal wisely cleans off that flank. Now Bread is just splattered against the wall. Goes leaping back onto the objective because they got to keep a toe on it. But there are multiple UTE players. Comet's waiting for him. So a nano boost has to be thrown in from Canary. Bread putting a lot of damage down. Derpy got down low but is able to back around to some safety. Bread doesn't have the reinforcements to get overly aggressive but does have... They them up. As they try to find some picks in here, but it's all going comments. As I'm not going to lie, that was one of like the longest first point battles I've ever seen between teams. Like in that last fight, we went through like rotations of ultimates. That was absolutely insane. Unfortunate, the Vikings threw everything they had into that fight. So UTD gets to come to Palace for this next point. They're going to have a gargantuan ult advantage. So the Vikings have to counteract that with early picks, but Bread's down. Yeah, the pin didn't quite land, but it does get the knock-up effect, so Pedal just picks bread out of the sky. Yep, got dropped an oops in chat. 
<laughs> Understandable. Hey, you know you're talking. You got you got to be so careful as a Doomfist against this composition. One slight mistake and it's curtains, and that's what we just saw. And it's going to result in UTD grabbing this first point. Now they got a photon barrier up. Red has returned. Uh, okay, there's some reinforcements. Let's say more Vikings are showing up on the scene. Going into the back. It looked like Petal was trying to get that kill. We'll find the kill on the Canary. Take the Ana out of the fight. Meanwhile, there is a Blizzard on the point from Petal. They have to sacrifice themselves to get it. Not a lot of follow-up on the back of it. So these two teams continue to trade blows and go back and forth through each of these fights. Meteor Strike into the back. Bred down to about 50 health. Trying to duel against the Symmetra. Zoe came in to help out. And indeed, they find that <laughs> Oh, that's so unfortunate as Zoe was able to win that 1v1 against Kashir, but they were so low and they end up walking into a, a room without knowing there was a turret in there and they get killed. Very unfortunate, but you get to come back for the Vikings. If you can come quickly, they're coming up on so many ultimates and they, they should be able to flip this point with them. Well, uh, they got to get on it. Sorry. What does make the touch there on the back end? Here comes Zoe onto the point. Just needs the last 3%. Gets it. Teleport out. Just in the nick of time. And Derpy is safe. Blade is now there. Zoe is gone. Cashier not having any of it. The light is stronger than the sword. Red is still on this point And is certainly not giving up on it easy. Trying to swing a 99 to 0. No small task for your lowly Doomfist. Meteor Strike up to escape the clutches of Kashir. Nice sleep dart. And Kashir's out of this fight. Canary keeping him in this. But Bread it finally gets splatted against the wall and can no longer hold. Three people from the Vikings are left on this point. What with an overclock? It has already found one courtesy of a raw rail gun. There's another. Derpy goes down. The rail is out. What is here to play? And she's leveling the battlefield. Yeah, she's coming through with clutch plays for the Vikings as everything was looking bad on that point. They're able to come in and she is able to clutch up. But having to come back from 99 to 0 is a very tough ask. UTD can just build up to a lot of these ultimates and come back and re-engage. But it's, the, it's a great stepping stone uh, for a great comeback on this map. What a cold... Coming out of what? Incredible. Uh, Darby tried to go down to the low ground, but uh, eats a sleep dart on the way. Boy, he does eliminate the on a threat. Derpy back on their feet, no worse for where? 5v4v4 v4 on the point after that kill from what? Petal is just as lethal as always with these eye sickles and now has a blizzard to boot. From the high ground, Zoe got blocked off, but still manages to get one. What is dancing around up there as well? Pulse Bomb hits the shield and still manages to get Derpy through it. Derpy couldn't get the drop off in time. The Vikings are going to bring this one back. As my jaw has dropped, that was insane. Zoe coming through now with the big Pulse Bomb is now... Like you mentioned, tied one to one, heading to that next flashpoint, which it looks like it's going to be Garden. So, this is a great position for the Vikings to be in because of the close distance they have. They can now look to play aggressively and stage these dives as UTD is going to look to find an angle to try and push in. And we, were, we were talking how we were worried the Vikings looked like they were on a bit of a, a downward slide here and in, in throughout the start of this fall season, but. They looking reinvigorated against the comments of Suravasa. Hogrunstone once again playing crazy angle on the back. It was a pin, counter pin. Bread retreats to the corner. It's in a rush out that's going to be running into an amplification matrix, so the Vikings do got to be careful. Yeah, unfortunately, what? Tried to stick their nose out, and Kashir is ready for it. I think there's a right click through an ant matrix. Nasty stuff. Still, Vikings are not giving up on this point. They already have 30%. Bread out of the fight. And a sound barrier in from Canary to hold on even longer. Zoe's able to get that kill on to Kashir. Jumping at only about half health and a long distance shot from Petal. Once again, cannot be underestimated. That was a big clutch headshot on to Zoe. Had just built up to the pulse bomb, but as the sound bear winged, able to hit the shot because that pulse bomb could have flipped that point in an instant. So now UTD gets to flip. They're going to have this shatter online, but double DPS ultimates for the Vikings. We saw last time what, what was able to do when she had the overclock. Can she set her team up once again, Bullskunk? As 
Paint here on the south side. A lot of pillars to dance around. Wall is up. That looked like a lot of comments. Kind of stuck in a small place. Brett is the one who gets the brunt of it. That's what I was afraid of. Like, wait a minute. Brett didn't get out of there. I never saw a Doomfist emerge. Brett gets absolutely stuck in there with the bulk of the comets. A little too close to the comet. Gets burned. This one's going over to UTD, and they'll reclaim their lead on Suravasa. And they didn't have to really use much ult commitment. That's the big key for UTD as we move into the next point where they put themselves on, uh, win one more point, and they will be up two to one. That was, you know, the Vikings kind of separated a lot, playing different angles, and it didn't work out to their advantage because Bread was not able to break free from the stranglehold UTD was able to put on him. So you got to be very weary of that going forward, as you mentioned. It just takes one misplay, and that Doomfist is going to just get destroyed by the amount of damage UTD can throw down. Long range teleport. Wow. You didn't know exactly what they wanted to accomplish. They're going to beat the Vikings on to this point. And this can be one of the difficult, most difficult points on the map to take once an enemy has it locked in. Meteor strike used, but that's an ant matrix there. Brett got to throw up the... Oh! oh it's Brad, you absolute madman! What a play! Punching into double damage! Brad fearlessly clears the battlefield! That was insane! As we're gonna get a replay on that, just look at this. Sees the windows, like, look, I have the empowered punch. Let's go for it! And oh, that was. Oh. Like you said, you beast, Bread, as they're trying to make the hero play to get the Vikings back into this map on Suravas, and that is a great start. This, this ain't no basic Bread. This is some artisanal stuff coming out here <laughs> from the Vikings. Now leave it in deep, but what? Caught out immediately. Shatter picks up two, and that second fire strike's gonna take Hogwarts Stone out of the fight. Um, now it is a 5v3, and UTD come back with a vengeance on this one. Yeah, that was quick, but that's a good 60% coming out from the Vikings, especially with how quickly this point increases. You put yourself in a good position if you can come in, especially with these incoming DPS ultimates. You can even nano blade here, and this sound barrier from Malarad won't be able to disrupt the amount of damage a nano blade can come into this next fight. That sounds fun. So much what you got, Vikings. They have been using the nano a lot on the Doomfist, so. You know, it's not a guarantee that they'll use El Classico. They're way, of course, still 10% away from that. Vikings are working away on the outside, and yeah, Nano used on to bread, as a matter of fact. Soundbearer and Blizzard thrown in here from UTD, and I'm not sure they got anything with either of those. As the sound barrier fades before the engagement starts, what with an overclock from the outside, and Zoe's gonna go ahead and pull out the katana as well. One falls to the ladder of the sword, make it three as Zoe cuts through four! Give me another one! Ah, Zoe denied all five. As I saw that coming a mile away, when that sound barrier and Blizzard were thrown in together, I'm like, that's going to give Zoe an opportunity to slice and dice through them like a hot knife through butter. As we now move in to the final fight for this point, can UTD make the requisite adjustments to come into this next fight? Derby's done a great job of limiting this punch potential by charging bread time and time again. Well, UTD have to, one concern right now, and that's start over time. They managed to get that. Step number two, keep your supports alive as Brett is haunting them here in the back. Decides to turn their attention on to Derpy, realizing they're very separated from the team. Derpy has to pin back into the rest of the team. Somebody's got a touch! It's Gashir and Pedal both leaping onto the objectors, sacrificing themselves to keep the overtime going. Still, in the end, the Vikings claim another one. 2-2 two -two on Suravasa. I think the one takeaway for UTD you can take coming out of that fight is the fact that you were in a losing situation but you were getting aggressive and pushing and forced out that Kitsune rush out of hog runestone so uh you're not gonna have to worry about that coming into that next fight and you're gonna have this defensive capability from Kashir to throw this photon barrier because you're gonna be dealing with another nano doom fist most likely immediately wasting no time Meteor strike available here Brett can be as aggressive as they absolutely want to the rest of the Vikings are staying out of LOS. They never turn that corner, and Brett's smart enough not to get too far away from them. UTD are going to make a rotation. Vikings are trying to meet them around, and they're going to just butt heads on this objective. Looks like a split approach here from the Vikings, and so far UTD doing a good job of fending off that flanker side. 
Blizzard on the point once again just ends up being a zoning ultimate. Denies Vikings to get on. Yeah, I think that's been the, the one the issue. Yeah, that's been the one issue for these blades is because of the mobility from the Vikings composition. These may ults are just turning into zoning ults and Mallard gets picked off with the sound barrier. The Hawk Runestone falls in response. Brett is able to find that kill, but there's no supports left standing for the Vikings. No tank here for the Comets. It's only deep. Well, I'm sorry. It's just a DPS and a support left. The Vikings coming out on top. Kashir is still getting one from the grave. <laughs> as uh, both teams aren't going to be able to try and play aggressively on this point, as people are going to be just getting back as Zoe just responded. They're going to have the DPS ultimates. I guess the, the, it's good that Malarad died early in that fight because, you know, maybe you commit the sound barrier and then you don't have that for this next fight going up against a blade and an overclock. So that that's the player you got to look at, Malarad. Malarad hid in behind enemy lines throughout that regroup. I think he's eventually gotten back with the rest of the team now. It's an interesting maneuver. Speaking of interesting, it's an uncontested steal here from UTD. Thieves in the night. They rob this fifth and final point of Surabasa back into their control. Yeah, and that might be a big mistake coming out from Vikings. It's going to depend how fast this out fight goes. Woo! Sound barrier may not even necessary. Doi immediately shuts down Zoe. And then this blade is absolutely dull. Brett on the outside taking pressure from all angles. Has what to back him up. Derpy shuts it down, but not before what's able to pick off Kashir. 4v3 favoring the Comets in this could be final fight of the map. Comets in control. Overtime is going, and Canary's in a lot of trouble on the outside. Brett does still have a medium strike to work with. It is in here with a duel against the Reinhardt. Dancing around the hammer and shield, but there are friends to be had here for the Comics. Meteor Strike eventually comes out. Kitsune Rush thrown in as well from the Vikings. There's two ults on the point, but there's two deaths in their back line. Bread will fall. Zoe gets locked out as the Blizzard finally lands on somebody, and UTD win the map. Wow insane coming out from utd jeff the we might see over the course of this of this next map vikings really not showing us anything different i mean is brett actually sticking with this wow actually they sticking are with this so they are showing us i mean it's the same composition but it's a wrecking ball instead of a doom fist honestly the strategy doesn't really change all that much no it doesn't i, I was just really curious because definitely you think when it comes to like the tanks and the meta we've seen doomfist it definitely is a little bit more powerful right now than the wrecking ball wrecking ball has just not seen his uh the time of light in overwatch 2 just yet uh, so i'm very curious uh as i think it's going to be very tough for you to find any kind of dive onto this sim or this may for bread yeah, or the lucio i mean like the baptiste is the only one look at that the pile drive just gets absolutely not a utd peace out immediately with a beautiful teleporter directly on the canary eliminate the honor eliminate the sustain bread is just rolling around with a speck of health the what? Always a vicious one. Always a threat standing here on the bot. What finds the Dome of Petal? Makes the slide read against the teleporter. Still trying to keep their distance here from the Rhine. Meanwhile, Brett has circled into the wow. back alongside Zoe. And this comp has worked in this first fight. Unreal. Thriving on that chaos. And, and um, what? She's getting that early pick off onto Petal. Set things up beautifully because then... Zoe doesn't have to worry about that May primary fire disrupting what they're trying to do on the Genji. So beautiful pick off from what to set the team up for victory in that first fight. And it's one of the one of the strengths of these kind of dive compositions. It doesn't require all five to be super effective. You can kind of take one piece of it down and the Genji and the, the Sojourn are still a threat in this case with bread falling early. Now, Derpy is trying to push forward. Same can't be said for the right heart composition. With the Baptiste gone, Derpy is far more vulnerable. 3v3 here could favor the Vikings, but Kashir had other plans. Some lightning fast kills onto a pair. Yeah, and that late stagger coming in for, uh, for UTD onto what is going to set up for a good amount of distance to be able to be matched for the for the comets but my big issue zoe's coming into his next fight has this blade as mallard not built up to the sound barrier so if you get aggressive here if you're the vikings you can take full advantage if they've made that raid it's gonna be the container rush to start things out 
They speed disengage out of UTD and they want into the room. Looks like they managed to get everybody into that small room. Brett does have mines, so that could be the coffin if they're not careful. Okay, it was actually a bait to try to use the blizzard onto the wrecking ball, but not able to lock it down. Sound barrier are now out from UTD as they emerge from their turtle shell. Derpy has emerged quite far, as a matter of fact, way separated from the rest of the squad. Zoe will sacrifice themselves for the Ryan Har, but to get an advantage in this style of composition. But not with Canary getting pounced on like that. What a read. But the response is even better. This dive coming out from the Vikings, it's, it almost feels like a counter dive. They're reading the play that Dallas wants to make. And even though they're trading, in the end, the Vikings are able to make the subsequent adjustments, get that dive onto the counter teleporter that UTD is throwing out and finding the picks. And that was a lot of ultimates UTD threw into that fight. As Kashir going over to this Torben, we saw this on Blizzard World, trying to affect Zoe on this Genji. It just shows you the level of impact Zoe has had, the level of fear Zoe is causing in the hearts of UTD right now as they have to give up this point. They cannot stick around to contest. Close spawns now available here for the Vikings, and they've got an early kill on the pedal to boot. As that is just going to afford even more of this. And we talk about the importance on these push maps of getting those first checkpoints. Because from here on out, if UTD ever want to make any kind of cart progress, you're looking at two fights you have to win. And uh, I mean, that's a good start. What's down? I mean, that's not an easy matchup to win. Pedal able to win out against the soldier. <laughs> Look at the Suzu. The Suzu denied the pin. Perfect timing there from Hog Runestone, though I don't think it's going to be enough to save the fight. Plus two here to UTD as they snag back Timothy. I, I actually don't think I've ever seen that interaction before. <laughs> the Suzu coming in just in time to save the pin. That, that's crazy. But the Viking. Right, right. It didn't block the damage. It denied the contact of the pin at all. Yeah. It, it, it's crazy, but the Vikings, they've kind of just been stockpiling these ultimates, waiting for this fight, and it's going to be tough for UTD to gain any distance with what the Vikings are coming into this fight with. Yeah, and UTD aren't trying to force it again. Measured aggression, which is appropriate for how you have to play this Reinhardt composition. UTD don't want to get greedy and put themselves into a bad spot on the other side of the wall. They know they have to win this fight and kill on a what's a good start, but there's mines all over your back line. Looks like the supports are able to get out safely. And Shears in a bit of a duel here with Hog Runeson. And Hog Runeson is going to back out. Use the Kitsune Rush uh, right before jumping into the back line as well. Vikings continue to pressure in from all sides. And eventually they're able to surround like a boa and constrict down onto the comments, extinguishing that flame. Yeah, it feels like that's the first time we've seen the Nano go on to Zoe in this series. And they took full advantage. Now they get to come into this fight with the blade in the next fight and because of the swaps we've seen from utd with malarad on this brig now your blades are going to be that much easier to find the damage and find the kills the only thing you have to be worried about is the protection that this brig can provide to really disrupt what you're trying to do on the genji So he's certainly aware. Uh, you can see the careful posturing up in the window knowing there's a lot of threats cannot be hasty with this dragon blade Derpy has pushed out way far away from their supports. Has to be careful. Knows that they've got a couple of threats looming above them on the top of the wall. The Kirko is going to drop down. Hog Runso pulls out the blade and decides to fend off the top hills. A teleport coming out. Or excuse me. Oh, wait. Why did UTD get up there? They don't even have a sim anymore. They just like looped all the way around so fast. But it uh, looks like the Vikings managed to survive the Blitzkrieg. And now here comes an overclock for a counterpunch. One already down, a little dancing out of Doye, but eventually they are taken down as well. All right, this has to be said. I know you end up winning this fight if you're the Vikings, but I was extremely impressed with that defensive ultimate use out of that uh, Molten Core to completely just eliminate the value that Zoe got on that blade. Still able to, you know, commit overclock and win the fight, but... Uh, very good plays coming out of Kashir's. Now they're going to go over to the Sombra, which I'm excited, looking to totally counter out what Brett is trying to do with those hacks available and the Sombra rework coming in. I, I have loved how she's changed in Overwatch 2 with this new rework. Oh, I don't know about all this. I mean, like... I mean, it's kind of a, a tough call, right? Do you stick with the identity? Do you stick what's gotten you this 2-1 lead? I mean, clearly it's not working, and you feel like you got to make adjustments, but Derpy already caught out immediately, and it can't help but feel the comments might have just abandoned their best strategy out of a tinge of desperation. 
I, I agree. It, it could be at this point they're not feeling this map with the Reinhardt and maybe they go back, you know, map number five and they, you know, with their map pick coming in, they look to do that. But I don't know. I, I kind of agree. I feel like uh, this team was feeling very like London Spitfire-esque where you live and die by what you are just good at. And uh, they're kind of abandoning that. Yeah, but it's actually working for him. Unlike the Spitfire, it looks like UTD is able to perform on some other compositions. Pedal opening things up on the Tracer. No, they have a mean Tracer from years of experience. And good follow-up from UTD to clean up on the rest of the fight. They've got the bot under their control. One of the few times they've had it in the past eight minutes. Yeah, we know how dangerous this incoming EMP is. Yeah, Canary didn't stand a chance. No shot. You survived that. Little follow -up. I can his bow support. Oh. Yeah. Swap for him so far. If you want to supports, I mean, it's good enough to finish off bread in the end. Yeah, being able, uh, I mean, your goal here is to match this distance. So judicious use of these ultimates from UTD is going to be uh, very important. So only having to commit the DPS ultimates so far is a great start. Is now they're going to have to use these support and tank ultimates to match distance. I mean, your goal is to far surpass the distance. Yeah, beautiful rock to lead to that kill on to Zoe. And we will not see the blade anytime soon. The bot just now starting to get moving again after the brief pause to unlock the new checkpoint here for the comments. As I think Malarad has the key ultimate that I'm looking at, this rally be able to pop it before this blade finds its value. It's out. So is the Ant Matrix as well. Oh, the Derpy gets sliced through before they can pop the Gravitic Flux. And a big old fight goes in Grandview's way just when they need it most. Zoe is there to bail about once again. Whew. Big plays coming out from Zoe. We talked about how incredible they've been on this Genji. Set things up perfect. We hadn't seen the Nanoblade coming out a lot for them in this series, but it is working out beautifully for them on Esperanza. For that was, the that was split second. That was split second on the dash versus the shield bash coming out of Malarad. That shield bash had land. That blade would not have worked. That was a millisecond timing in that interaction. Pedal does get one here, though, Ray. And it looks like the comments aren't quite done with this map, though they still got some work to do. Yeah, as the, as the tank and DPS have been separated from the supports because of the mines, but you're able to get the kills. And this is where things are tough. Overtime Ooh. spawns. This might be over, Jeff. Yeah, this is looking done. The Sigma will keep anybody from contesting the card. Oh, somehow, Hogarinso gets there just in the nick of time. Is there anybody else to back them up? There is not. The Comet shines bright across the sky of NECC once again as they win their third in a row, taking down the Vikings 3-1. to one. As the adjustments coming in to abandon the Reinhardt that had worked out so well for them to swap over to the Sigma with the Sombra ends up working out.